I love old books. I've shown this book on the vlog before. This is a turn of the century, uh, I think first published in 1900, introductory astronomy book. And what I love about it is it's just mostly geometry. It's really simple. And I just love the graphics. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Look at these things. One of the fun, nerdy things that people do when they write their thesis is try to see what the oldest citation they can include is. Now, astronomy's been around for a long time, like maybe for all of time. So it's impossible to have read all of the literature. In fact, it's impossible to just read all the literature that's coming out right now. Too many papers are being published every month for me to read any appreciable fraction of them. It's super important to read and super important to read old things because so many times the idea you think is fresh and new has been done. And that's okay. It's often okay to redo an idea. Okay, I don't have a physical copy of my PhD thesis. I printed at like 50 bucks a pop. I printed like eight copies, but I gave them all to like family members and my grandparents and my advisor, however, I have a copy of my advisor's thesis, which is actually really awesome. Turning to the future work section from 30 years ago, it is fun to see how many of these things came true. The oldest citation is 1949, so 40 years before this thesis was published. Not bad. One thing we have in astronomy which makes this whole endeavor a lot easier now is ADS, or the Astrophysics Data System. This is like a search engine just for astronomy, and primarily for astronomy and physics papers. But it makes searching for these old papers really easy. Like, like look at this, 1600 to 1700. Like, that's nothing. It's so easy to search by, by year. A lot of interesting names are in here. Brahe, comma, Tycho, Kepler, Galileo, Sandwich, comma, Earl of. I like it. Halley. Huygens, Cassini. Uh, I think this one's kind of amusing. Picard, comma, Jean. When I look through my thesis, the oldest citations is Carrington, 1859. That's for the famous Carrington solar storm. So it becomes really easy to include these old citations, which I think is fun. It helps the literature live. <laughs> So I asked astronomers on Twitter what the oldest citation in their thesis was. Let's just like look at some of the answers here. Dr. Victoria Grinberg says Roche, 1849. Nice. I like that. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Joey Rodriguez says he's cited work as, as far back as 1890 thanks to Dash. Uh, Keaton Bell says Von Zeipel, 1924. That's pretty good. James Paul Mason says Pearson, 1895. Ashley Pagnata says Levin Pickering, 1913. Awesome, awesome. And then Chandra Sekar, 1931. Chandra Sekhar did everything, so. Uh, my friend Brett Morris, who's writing his thesis right now, right now is the current winner with Copernicus 1543 for the Copernican Principle and Galileo 1613 for the first observations of sunspots. Some more good ones here, okay. Uh, Helen Johnson says Galileo 1610, Milky Way being made up of stars. That's a good citation. Okay, here's one for Hipparchus 160 BC, but I doubt that's an ADS. One from Stein Sigurdsson. It says, Michael, 1767, arguing that some stars must be binaries based on statistical excesses of close pairs. That's a cool one. Oh, and Chris Lintot, Bessel, 1844, on the variation of proper motions of Procyon and Sirius. That's cool. Oh, okay. This might this one might be my favorite. Molnar Laszlo says, Captain, 1890, discovery of variable stars which turn out to be R. Lyra. Followed closely by, he says, followed closely by Bailey, 1899, and beautiful hand-drawn light curves. Ooh, those are cool. I'm going to include this figure. Jason Wright, Galileo, 1613, for the sunspot records prior to the Maunder Minimum. Laura Mayorga says, Müller, 1893, pretty good. <laughs> but it's in German, and she notes that she technically hasn't read it. I think that's true for a lot of people, that these are uh fun citations that we haven't actually read them though i will say i have actually read my oldest citation God, these are awesome thank you to everybody who participated in this twitter thread i'll link the original twitter thread uh, below and if you have one from your phd go at it it's this is really fun okay and besides like 
weird flexing about how esoteric your citations can be. What's the point? Science in many ways is the literature. Really, and I've said this so many times on this channel, science is people. But we move on, we die. New generations of scientists come up. And if we don't write it down, then what did we do? In many ways, the literature is science. It is astronomy. By including these old citations in our work, by reflecting on the past, I think in some ways we keep this work alive. It's impossible to look at all of the old work, and it's impossible to know uh, every corner of the literature. But by including some of these citations, it helps people go back. It helps us reflect. It helps us relearn what's been known. I think that's important. That to me seems like an important part of science.